Okay, so now we're to principle four, and this is where we start really focusing on what reasonable adjustments are and how they look, you know, within the workplace for you, within that healthcare setting. So we use an acronym of TEACH to try and really embed what reasonable adjustments are. Everybody thinks when it comes to reasonable adjustments of wider doors and braille and easy read, but actually we want to look far wider than that when we're looking at people with learning disabilities and autistic people and what those reasonable adjustments are. So the acronym TEACH stands for time, environment, attitude, communication and help. Now in this principle, we're going to focus on the first one, time. So I'm gonna talk through with Gavin. Right, Gavin, so time. Time we know is absolutely essential when it yeah. comes to making reasonable adjustments. So first of all, you know, if we think back to what we've already talked about, it's about whoever that person is in a healthcare setting who makes that initial contact, really taking their time to get all the information that's essential, find out all those nuances of what that person needs to be able to get the equitable healthcare from their service. Yeah. And if someone has a do not attend, taking that time to go back to the referrer to find out what the reason is and to really make sure that it's not because there's a barrier due to their learning disability or their autism and that it is that they've chosen not to attend making an informed decision. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the background part of time. Now, the next element of time is about thinking about, you know, sometimes somebody may actually need an appointment at a specific time of day. And, you know, time of day can make a difference between someone getting health care and not getting health care, can't it? Mm -hmm. So did you have someone you went to school with you talked to me about once? Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I had somebody, I had a friend who was um, very autistic and his routine, he had a very strict routine when it came to things. So if anything happened during dinner time, which would interrupt that, he would just go off the handle. It had to be literally anything, anything which was going to be different, anything which was going to interrupt or anything had to be for what he called free time. Right. So his his diary was very yes. measured out so in sections of the day. So you would say to him like you would say to him, so um Harry, would you like to would you like to go out um today? And he'd say, Oh yes, it'd have to be, yeah, it wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to do it um during this time because I do this. Um I could probably do it between two and three, right. but then that's my free time. And it would literally okay. be very So like if that. he was given a healthcare appointment in a slot which was breakfast time or lunch time, yeah. he wouldn't be able to tolerate no. that. No, not at yeah. all. And he was obviously someone who could communicate. Yeah. But somebody who struggles to verbally communicate would actually present that maybe with behaviour and would not tolerate the treatment or the investigations yeah where if they were seen at a different time of day they would tolerate the treatment and investigations yeah so yeah. time can make a huge difference now the other element of time is around time to absorb information and truly take that in isn't it yes so tell us about your antibiotics because those are a really good example so i went to i had a throat infection um one time and i went to the doctor and the doctor said okay gavin I'm going to describe you antibiotics. Now, I'd never had that before. So first time ever having it. And he said, he said, um, take these twice a day and make sure you finish your course. So I went home, I took them, and like with any other paracetamol or ibuprofen tablet, I took them, and then when I started feeling better, I stopped, but then I started feeling unwell again. So I went back to the doctor, and I said, the doctor said to me, okay, Gavin, so... Did you finish your course? And I said, well, no, I don't finish it until next year. I said, I only just started You were thinking it. college course? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I thought he was talking about my college course. And so again, he didn't take the time to make sure you understood the instructions. Mm -hmm. he, you, you said, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And walked out. Yeah. And he didn't take the time to say, so you're going to take these tablets. Do you understand? Tell me back what exactly you're going to do. 
and take the time to make sure you fully understood the instruction. Yeah, all I thought was he meant um, take and make sure that I finish my college. Yeah, course. like like in Europe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take, take these pills and don't forget to go to college. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not what you were communicating at all. Yeah, and I was sort of always describing that it's about that pauses as well and taking time to allow someone to process what you're saying and say it back and I compare it to my absolutely dreadful ability to speak French if I go on holiday to France I am desperate to try and speak French now I will practice my phrases and I'll say them and I can say them and people think oh she's a good communicator because I can practice my one line and it will come across really well and then they answer me and they'll say something back. And to me, I'm hearing... Blah, 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 blah. And I think, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then I have to absorb it. And they're like, oh, right, she said, you know, would you like a table by the window? Right, OK. Now I want to say, yes, please. Um, if we could have a table for four, that would be good. Now, how am I going to say that? In the meantime, she said... And said a load more things. <laughs> and I've never absorbed any of it. Because my brain needs time to take in the words and think about them and then give an answer. And if we think of, as health professionals, mm. in that term, rather than always trying to say more, that can really help, can't it? To yeah. actually take the time to listen and really absorb the information. Yeah. So when it comes to someone rushing, I also I know you touched on it before. You have a propensity to always agreeing if someone's yes. rushing you, don't you? Yes. So, you know, talk through that. You. If I get if I get anxious or or nervous or if I feel that somebody is going to do something or they and things or they say the wrong kind of phrase to me, I will automatically go into yes, I know everything and completely understand everything you're saying when actually I have no idea. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's about taking that time, isn't it, then? Yeah. So it's time to talk and make a pledge for what you, as individuals or as a team, can do to make reasonable adjustments. Think time. What can your service do? Can you improve the amount of time to gather that background information? Can you add extra time to appointments if needed? Can you plan around time of day if that's going to actually directly impact whether someone can or cannot accept your service? Over to you.